Hi guys, how are you doing? It's that time of year again when we all start gossiping and looking at rumours for the upcoming NAM show. This one is 2020. I can tell NAM's approaching because my nose is blocked solid as usual when I do these NAM videos. However, there is some really nice stuff that has already been released from uh, ESP and also from Dean Guitar, which we'll have a look at in a bit. There's also a new head from Friar, uh, a bit of a, from Friar Amps, a bit of an upgrade. But most importantly, and uh, something that I'm really interested in, is the new Fender Jim Root Jazzmasters. Now, for those of you that don't know, Jim Root and uh, Slipknot have been on tour this year and he's been spotted numerous times with a different jazz master from the one that he's used to being seen with. It's a white one and it has block inlays. Also, it is featuring Jim Root Demon pickups by EMG. They are his new signature pickups and he is referring to them as retroactive. What that means, I don't know. They still will be powered by a battery. They'll still have an active preamp in there, but I think they are more of a natural, wider, not quite as compressed sounding humbucker they're pretty far from the 8160 combination that we are used to seeing in his guitars the Jazzmaster guitar itself has a slimmer neck he says that it's somewhere in between a Charvel c-shape and a Fender modern c-shape so it will be slightly thinner than his other Jazzmaster I'm a massive fan of Jim Root and his music but also his guitars because I really like what he does with the fenders he's basically changed you know he had his strap model that he changed and put emgs in it and hot rodded it i guess to make it into a modern metal machine he did the same with a telecaster then he did the same with a jazz master and there's also one he's been using on tour with a floyd because one of the solos off a new album he's uh using quite a lot of uh wobbling on the trim as he's picking and that's what that guitar is for. Fender made that especially for him. I hope that goes into production. There is no plans at the moment for that to go into production, but it looks a really, really nice guitar, and I wish that it was gonna go into production. The, the new Jim Root Jazzmaster is gonna be in white, a satin white, similar to his other guitars. Uh, it looks like an ebony board, and obviously, like I've already said, it's got the block inlays. Really excited about that. Really like Jim Root guitars, and I really like the Jazzmaster because it sits really nice on the strap. It's really comfortable, and kind of reminds me of the way my King V's, what I always use, Life Balance. Uh, it really sits upright, and also it kind of shifts to the left. So all the frets that are high up when you want to reach them are just there next to your hip rather than sometimes when your body is uh, jammed in the way. Boss are working on something really, really interesting. It's basically the Wazza technology. They've somehow crammed it into some headphones. So uh, you can somehow play your guitar and it will come through the headphones and it will have all the tones <coughs> from the Wazza. There is also a new Paul Gilbert overdrive pedal coming into production from JHS. Whether that'll be ready in time for NAM, we don't know yet, but there's definitely, uh, they've definitely been, the guys from JHS have definitely been working alongside Paul Gilbert to create a new over signature overdrive for him. Earlier on in the year, PRS uh, released some sandblasted style uh, voodoo finished guitars and a few other guitars have jumped on that now. ESP are also going to be releasing um, some voodoo style sandblasted finishes which are really really nice. They're also re-releasing the metal guitar, the Phoenix. I think that the Phoenix is going to be available in a hardtail. On the screen at the moment, if you have a look, there's an ESPEC. That's kind of last year's uh, kind of look that came became really popular. I think Jackson were the first people to kind of start releasing these almost watercolory uh, flame tops. Kind of a wishy-washy space age almost. It looked to the tops that uh, everybody kind of bought into. And next to it there is a Viper that's just like a red uh, flame maple. I think those are new as well for 2020. Not 100% sure. Moving on to Schecter guitars. Now, Schecter guitars were like all the rage, weren't they? Not so long ago, everybody who was anybody who wanted a, a Schecter, especially the seven strings that were really popular, and rightly so as well. Very good guitars. I like them myself. Schecter are a very, very good brand. And I always find that Schecter stuff is really, really good quality. Wood, well-built and pretty sturdy guitars. Not toy-like or anything like that. They've always got some decent weight to them. Now, the Schecters that are on the screen at the moment, hello, seven, eight strings and all that 
stuff's not my type of thing. The two finishes on the left and right, uh, really nice. I really like them. Not so keen on the middle one, that's not my thing, but yeah, I really like the finishes on the left and the right. Not sure what they are called, but they're definitely new guitars for 2020 from Schecter. Dean Guitars have already released most of their guitars at a previous show in the summer and as usual it's nothing that new from Dean just uh, different tops different color ranges really like this V not my color I like black or white I'm a simple guy but I do like uh, the Dean V I do really feel like that's probably their best guitar along with the ML and they are also their own shapes really not copied off anything you know or anything like that so I probably should mention Kerry King if we're mentioning Dean in 2020. Uh, yeah, now his guitar is very expensive, his signature guitar. Why the move to Dean guitars took so long, I don't know, because I expected this to happen like years ago. I mean, tons of years ago, you know, like 10 years ago even. Uh, he was such a good friend of Dimebags and seemed to hang around with the whole Dean clan so much that I just thought that he would have he would join Dean many moons ago but for whatever reason he didn't maybe contract i don't know but he's brought a guitar out it's nice I like it it's very kerry kingy i do like bees i do like dean uh it's expensive thousands cost thousands it's a limited edition that's what they're calling it in the usa and all that business but it's expensive okay now vinnie moore has also got a new dean guitar out love vinnie moore don't listen to him that much anymore, but some of his licks and some of the shapes and stuff that Vinnie Moore plays are just legendary. It's legendary playing for me, is uh, Vinnie Moore. One of my all-time favourite shredders. Uh, I'm not a shredder myself, but I do like him. Anyway, he's brought out basically a Paul Gilbert Ibanez uh, with Dean right on it. Yeah, you know the one. Mike Fortin and his gang have been flashing around a pedal, the Hex Drive. Not sure, I don't know much about this pedal. I should do more research before I started waffling on about it, but the Hex Drive looks like it's a new pedal to add to the Zool, the 33 and the Grind range, you know. Uh, Mike Fortin seems to be going down the pedal route more than the amp route, because obviously most of us can't really afford a 14 amp unless we, you know, sell a kidney or something like that. We all want a 14 because they're all some metal amps. But in reality, you know, the pedals are probably the closest to the real thing that we are actually going to get. Well, I'm on the subject of Mike Fortin. If you are in the UK, please check out a friend of mine called Dan Gower. He does Cali mods, very similar to uh, Mike Fortin in the US. And he's pretty reasonable priced, excellent guitar player. So if you're after turning your Marshall or your Jet City into a super high gain, roaring beast, check out Dan Gower. Bit of a plug there for him right so finally Friar amps have brought out some kind of uh new amp the deliverance well it's a deliverance but they're actually doing something to it to improve it i don't know exactly what it is i know very little about Friar amp but they are doing something with this deliverance head that they keep flashing all over the internet everybody wants to hear it i've played through the pitbull the old pitbull Friar pitbulls a couple of times and I quite liked them. They were, they were nice, nothing wrong with them. They did have some distribution problems in the UK and that stopped me ever owning one. Whether or not that's over and done with, I don't know. Like I said, I'm from the UK, so Friar amplification over here is not a, not a massive thing, but they may have sorted out the distribution now. I don't know. But anyway, the deliverance is coming out. It's a, a, a new amp. It's It's been improved and... That's going to be at NAMM 2020, and I'm sure everybody will know what it sounds like. As you all know, I'm a big Jackson Guitars EVH amps fan. Something's going on at EVH gear, yeah. okay? Something's going on. I don't know whether it's a new amp. I don't know what it is, but something is going on, and it's getting talked about, but nobody seems to really know what it actually is. They're trying to find out, and nobody really knows. Please stay tuned, because as soon as I find out, there's going to be a video on here. Also, subscribe, click the bell, give me a thumbs up. And more importantly, because this is what this channel is all about, go in the comments and talk about all the new gear at NAMM. And if you know any other gossip that I've missed off in this video, maybe in my second video, because I'm going to do two or three of these like I always do, but please put it in the comments. 
Let's hear about it if you've got any rumours for NAM 2020. And I can't wait to see personally what uh, the brands that I endorse actually bring to NAM, which is obviously Jackson, Charvel and EVH. Please subscribe, click the bell. It's all about NAM. See ya.